example. Again, as I think I mentioned, this, the, the title tells you lots about what's going on here. What are some important ideas or important ideas? What, do you, what is this example teaching you? or What's the idea behind this example? Why is it in the book? What do you think? This graph is uh, misleading in a pretty big way, yeah. What about it is, how, how is it misleading or what, what has been done in the making of this graph to make it misleading? Absolutely, that, that it makes this first score look really small compared to this one, right? But the actual numbers, 60 and 65, those are pretty close together. They're not that much different. Certainly not what this shows. I mean, this shows, this, this is almost, you know, three times as big. The area of that bar is three times as big. 65 is not three times as big as 60. That, that makes it quite misleading because that first, with this break in the scale, it's not a continuous scale. There's a break between six, 0 and 60. The first square is 60, and then it's 2 after that. So that makes it pretty misleading. If you, uh, if you were Matthew and you wanted to show or make it look like you had this vast improvement, say you had this deal with your parents or something, that um, if I show this great improvement on these four tests that I'm taking, if I improve a lot, you get some kind of reward or something like that. This is the graph Matthew would make, right? Because he'd say, "Look at this! Look at all this! Look at this improvement here! I went up dramatically over the the whole thing." Whereas, if you were Matthew's parents and you didn't want to give him the reward, <laughs> may, I don't know, maybe they do. They might produce a graph more like this. There's no break in this scale. Every square is worth ten here. They don't skip the first part of the scale and spread out the rest. If you if you look back again, this whole part of the that's all been skipped on the previous graph, and then they spread out this part of it. So that the previous graph only shows this, so it really stretches out the differences between the bars because it skips that, that part, the most of the scale. Any other important things that you think you found in there? It, it isn't wrong to make a graph like this, but it, it really overemphasizes the differences. So it depends, uh, I guess, what you're, what you're wanting to do with it. Hopefully you tried the show you know and found... Um, how could this graph be misleading? What are some ideas here? What do you think? How is this graph misleading? Yeah, the, the, the break here is huge on this one. $1.14 and $1.19, that's hardly a difference at all. How much is the first space worth? It's worth $1.14 and the next space is only worth $0.05 cents and they're equal size. This looks like it's twice as much as that bar when in fact it's not twice as much. If you were to draw an accurate graph, now it says describe how to how to redraw the graph. That doesn't mean you have to redraw it, but if you did, there'd be two bars that were almost the same size because a dollar fourteen would come up just below it. They wouldn't look that much difference different. Example two. Again, read the read the title when you're before you start discussing it with your partner. Distorting the visuals. What's uh, what's misleading, or how? What 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 about this graph is misleading? I want different people to talk here, so we got to have some. Yes. Yeah, the pictures are far different sizes, right? The the fish represents ten, and the cat represents ten, and the dog represents ten. The fish is a lot bigger than the than the other two. Three fish here are longer than four dogs or four cats, right? Since the pictures are different sizes, it really makes it, it kind of misrepresents the data, misrepresents the information. You could count and figure it out that the first one's 40 and the next one's 40 and this one's 30, but it really misrepresents it to, to make those fish so huge there. If you wanted to do that, how could it be redrawn? Well, make the pictures the same size or use the same symbol for all of them. That would be better. I know it's cute to have cats and dogs and fish there, but as long as they're the same size, that might be better. The show you know, hopefully you uh, answered some of the questions here. Explain how the graph could be misleading. It's the same idea, right? These pizzas are huge. Three pizzas are kind of as long as those four bowls of macaroni and cheese or as long as whatever that is, seven hamburgers. The fact that the pictures are different sizes really makes it look misleading. So redrawing it, make them all the same size or use the same symbol. The conclusion, when it talks about what conclusion does the graph suggest, conclusion means what, like what, what would you, 
decide based on the graph. If you just had a quick look at it, you'd probably say, oh, look, it's all, it's the, all of them are the same, right? Because they all stretch as far here. But it's not true, right? Which one's the highest one? Yeah, this is way higher, right? If it was drawn properly, this would be far, way out there. Uh, the third one, distorting the size of the bars. This one maybe isn't so obvious as the other ones. It's, it's very much connected to the, the pictograph that we just looked at. This is twice as big as that. This represents 4,000. This one represents 2,000. The bar is twice as tall. That works. That makes sense. What's the problem with this one? What's the problem? Yeah, this one's, it's, not only is this one taller, but it's also wider, right? It's twice as wide and twice as tall. I guess just, you know, it might be logical to do that, that, well, we'll make it twice as tall and twice as wide. If you make something twice as tall and twice as wide, I could now fit four of those little ones in here, right? Four of these would fit into that bar. So it overemphasizes it. Even though it's twice as tall, now it's also twice as wide, and it gives this visual effect of being... Too much. And the uh, show you know connected to this. Now there's, there's something that talks about area here. These little bubbles at the side are intended to help you with some information that you might not remember or to give you a, give you some more information. Make sure you're looking at those things and thinking about what, what they mean here when you're putting down some important ideas and important information. You could talk about the area of the bars, not just the height of the bars. Uh, when you did this question, you probably got similar ideas here. This circle, right, it's kind of weird to use a circle as a graph, but one is 20 and one is 40, but this one is twice as high and twice as wide. It's got twice, it's got four times as much of the area. When you make something twice as high and twice as wide, you get, you get a lot more, you get four times as much area, not just twice as much area. The conclusion leads you to believe that this is way more of a difference than it is. All right? So in this in this section, anyways, talking about misleading graphs, the things you have to understand are the important ideas here. Uh, misleading graphs cause you to maybe misinterpret data or draw conclusions that aren't true. The format of the graph can be misleading. You miss out the scale, make the bars wider, and miss out part of the scale. That really is going to make a difference, right? 40... 38, 40 and 38 are almost the same here. This makes it look like this is four times as big as that. Distorting the visuals or the bars, distorting the scale, all that uh, ideas that you need to have out of here. As far as the what you need to do, um, remember you can look back at this list here. This is this is what you need to do here. This what's highlighted down here. Okay, this is what you need to do for this section. I'm going to give you a bit of time right now to work on that, and then we're going to look at something else, okay? If you're not quite done with that, really quickly finish. We can't kind of sit and work on examples for an hour and a half, right? At this point, if you haven't got the, the rest of the examples kind of done, you're probably going to either have to do that really quickly right now or finish that some other time. Remember that this, I want you to put this in your other notebook, right? You have one notebook for the check your understanding, and all the questions, and then one notebook for the explorers and the examples and things we do together. Is everybody clear on what you need to work on right now? These questions, on whatever page they are in for section 1.2, I don't put page numbers down here because you guys can find them. If you did the examples and we just checked them, we just looked at them together, you can check those things off your list. If you've read the key ideas, we really quickly looked at them together. There's not really a way to check them, so I guess we could cross that off. But then this has to be done. You should be checking the answers in the back, and once you've done that, you can check that off as well. Any questions? <laughs>